Right, folks, I do hope you're well. I've got the bins on for this. I'm going to read one to you. I've got another one in our long-running show now. The Scum. That's how the book is. Versus us, the punters. Somebody sent this to me about 10 days ago. I left it a couple of days till I got the chance to read it. I started to read it. I got waylaid. I got called away. Forgot all about it. They messaged me over the last couple of days. said, did you forget me story? Did you not want to read it? Nothing could be further from the truth. I really do apologise. Although I must admit, I think I started to read and I thought, God, this is a long one. And I can see me getting this wrong because sometimes when I'm reading them to you, I don't, because I don't know what's in the story, I, st- I read a line and I thought, that don't read right and I have to start again and whatever and it's not easy. And I remember this guy saying, if, if memory serves, don't mention my name and don't mention the bookmaker. So I'm not going to be able to mention the bookmaker. Oh, that's a bit weird really. We'll try to do it without and see how it goes. Um, because I think he's worried about getting any grief. Right, here's is is the, is the message now. Came from a gent on the 28th it was, so what, 12 days ago, 13 days ago, I don't know what. Right, hope you enjoy and welcome your feedback comments on your next couple of YouTube shows. I think it's actually maybe a first on your show of being blocked and banned for merely highlighting and exposing my views on this company, stake restricting and knocking back a bet. So he must have put something in my comment section that's been wiped by YouTube. I don't know what it was. I don't know what he's on about. I don't know what got wiped. I really don't. I tend to not know them when they get wiped. They get wiped before they become viewable. Or sometimes I only view things every five or six hours and they could be on there and then get wiped. I don't know. But as I keep saying, I never wipe anything. If anyone's done it, it'll be YouTube. It says, for transparency, I advise you to protect both of us uh, by not reading the name of the bookmaker as this young... This person who runs a bookmaker is liable to try and hit us with a defamation or worse if he stumbles across your channel. He is a shrewd and observant enough interviewee, so best that we tread carefully. So I'm not going to mention the name at this stage, but none of them worry me, uh, my friend. They don't, because if they're true stories, I've got nothing to worry about. If they're not, then I could be in hot water, but uh, that's my, my fault, taking a chance on everybody that writes into me. I tend to believe people before they let me down, and, and that's the way it is. Right. I'd also advise you probably do not read out my name either. I'm not going to, and you'd advise that. Right. The background to the story is I used on Twitter to highlight my customer grievances for not laying a bet. And his comment attitude was really disappointing and a bad reflection on decent independent bookies who who are up against the corporate tycoons on a daily basis. He says, this is a true story, and he puts in brackets, Apologies that it's uh, full blown, it's, but it's a blow for blow account, including different Twitter inserts, so that we can judge for ourselves from the comments and feedback. Right. Says, my first five bets on opening the account were in play sports bets on a rugby union match, and it served as an early sign of things to come. Why? Because Mr. Bookie kept hitting, hitting the suspend market button greying out total points over lines as I tried to place a bet. I tried several times. I just gave up and could tell he wasn't interested in taking a fair bet of 100 euros on a typical five to six odds. I think I shouldn't have said euros there, really. Right. Cross-referencing this online website of the same game in running, I saw the larger big corporation firms didn't suspend the same game state at all. But this bookie wasn't obliging. He kept suspending. So being messed about on your first bets, this account wasn't really mu- of much use or benefit to me in the long run. Don't really see what the problem is, as total odds in play are heavily skewed, with the bookie margin built in. So you need a healthy strike rate to beat the over round. Like most disgruntled customers out of not, who have not been given a fair crack of the whip, I let him know my feelings in a fair and courteous tweet and his attitude, fabricated response, don't ask for overs bets when the player has crossed the try line and you will be fine, which was simply not the case. When the other firms left all their total markets open at the same game in the same period. Fast forward August 2024, the Olympics is in full swing and I was siding with Team GB 800 meter runner Kelly Hodgkinson to land the BBC Sports Personality of 2024. The money was slowly coming in for her prior to her 800 metre finals run. She was backed in from 7-4 to four favourite to even money favourite. The best current price on offer with this independent bookie um, 
the best was even money. Uh, the best with the big independent, the big, the big corporations was four to five or ten to eleven. So only a very small margin. Better with this small independent startup firm. See, it doesn't read true, folks, but this is exactly how he's typed it. So I can only write what's been typed, and I can't always work out what they mean when they type it. It's a bit like Zorro's were sometimes. Sometimes they didn't seem to make any sense, but he knew what he was on about, and I'm sure this guy does. I hope you're picking from this, folks. I think he's saying he could get a better knowledge concern. It was very slightly better odds than the big ones, but I'm guessing he weren't able to put it on. We're going to read them on in a minute. Bear in mind, this uh, spotty market is rather popular and does carry a fair bit of nationwide interest with over 200,000 matched on Betfair Exchange. I requested a stake of £150 on Keely Hodgkinson at Evens for the sports personality. The market was still open five minutes prior to her, her 800 metre finals run. Said Bucky have accused me of stealing prices and trying to place a bet five minutes before the event. But this is not an overnight horse racing market and if the traders were sleeping on, on the job, not taking down market, surely it was their fault. And he sent me a copy of the bet slip he tried to get on. Now, I can't understand why, if they're the odds, why five minutes before the race, and she's not yet run, they're not going to take the bet. Because, firstly, she has to win the race for the odds to maybe contract even more. But secondly, she still has to win the sports personality. She's won that race. It doesn't mean to say she's definitely going to win sports personality, although I know she's favourite for it. I don't get that. Anyway, this is bookmakers, I suppose. This is how, how much things have changed. Uh, anyway, that, that is not the fault of the customer. Uh, in brackets, being me in this case, close brackets. The end result was re referred to a trader and it got knocked back and I was given a total stake of 25 at evens and the price moved immediately to 8 to 11. With 25 quid, you moved it from evens to 8 to 11 or 1.72. However, there was no moan moaning from the big corporation uh, flutter. They aptly took uh, a fair wage on the same market Five minutes before the Kelly Hodgkinson race. No issues at all. Now the account is suspended. Who cares? It's of no use to me. But it's more a principle that this bookie is suspending a customer account with no fair reasonable explanation and denying access to your funds, 50 euros, or open bets placed on the account. Should the bet win in December, the customer has no fair idea whether they will be paid back or whether it will stay in their own bank account. It brings back the argument, don't put a price on a market up if you're not willing to let a customer win at least a hundred pounds euros in their chosen currency. This bookie view of banning individual individuals who bet on NAF markets is not for him to decide. If you offer a market on site, you should at least lay a fair bet of a mini minimum a hundred. Um, we need a minimum bet law to come in for all on sports sports and racing markets well that's something i've been banging on about for months now um he's showing the bets where he's tried to get the money on and it got refused and now we've got 25 on in the end um betfair sportsbook at least allowed a fair stake and was placed five minutes before they actually ran the 800 meter race uh the place place so his weak argument of placing a bet just before the final race is frankly irrelevant if betfair could do it he could have done it it has some screenshots of the particular online spat, which illustrates the above paragraphs. Yeah, he's saying if you're putting bets on shitty dance markets, um, and if you're betting on NAF markets like sports, blah, 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 we don't really want your bets. Well, I would say to that, why put them up? If you don't want to take bets, why put the market up there to start with? Uh, it'll save everyone a lot of time if I just close your account, it says, from the person at this company. Um, and that was it, folks. So it's just another instance of a, a betting company. Not a huge one, but I believe they, they're growing. They're relatively new and growing. I'm not trying to give anything away. I think some of you might have deduced who it is now. I think the, the guy should have let me say who it is, really, but I have no problem with not saying. And it's just another case of how they just taking the old Johnny Cash out of the us the punters they are they just they're really taking it and it's just it's just a shame it, you know why can't you have 50 or 100 pound on on an even money shot on any market crazy why can't you have it five minutes before a race starts when when you're not betting on that race you're betting on the overall race which is in December 
she falls in the 800 metres all of a sudden she's not a favourite for sports belt she goes up to 16, 20, 33 to 1 and doesn't win it crazy absolute madness but I don't know, it just begs belief, doesn't it? You know, at the end of the day, the bookie is always right, we're always wrong, they make up the rules, we have to stick by them. If we don't like it, we either go elsewhere or they close our account. If we go elsewhere, we have the same with the next people, and if we don't like it, we we'll go elsewhere and they close our account. If we don't like it, then you get where I'm coming from. And so we close all the doors on ourselves and we've got nowhere to bet. And they wonder why folks are going to the black market. And or, they wonder why folks are getting out of betting altogether. If only these bookmakers would give a fair crack of the whip, they'd keep punters, you know, and ultimately they'd make more money. I just don't get it at all. So, that's it from me. I'll uh, download this one. You'll get this one hopefully by about half past eight tonight. And I will speak to you all tomorrow.